And to put the vote in perspective, Elsie Leung joins us live from Hong Kong. She is the deputy director of the Hong Kong Special Basic Law Committee of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ining. So what happens now? Was this Hong Kong's last and best chance for a reform? Is there any room for compromise? Well, um, I think we, the, the, the defeat is not unexpected because um, the power is within the hands of legislative councillor. We need two-third majority, although the majority of legislators and the public support the proposal for universal suffrage. But we could not attain the two-third majority. We were hearing some optimism. We've also heard that this was historic, that it's never happened before. Describe the reaction that you have seen and witnessed in Hong Kong since this took place, and, and what are you hearing from people? Well, of course we are disappointed because the proposal is a good one. We never had the election of the governor before 1997, and at the moment the chief executive is elected by 1,200 people. In 2007, we have been promised that in 2017 we could have universal suffrage for election of the chief executive, the issues of legislative council to follow. But because of the veto of the proposal, um, the, the, we, not only that we won't have uh, universal suffrage in 2017, but the um, chances of reopening the issue is rather remote. So as, as we heard and as you mentioned, uh, the procedure to choose Hong Kong's chief executive for 2017 will remain the same as it has. Um, any chances at all that this issue could come up again soon after 2017? Well, after 2017, it depends on the um, situation of Hong Kong whether um, the climate is good for further um, for pursuit of um, universal suffrage. And um, uh, uh, we have to run through the five-step procedure again. Of course, the method for um, election of, of the chief executive and legislative council may change. However, it must comply with the basic law and also the decision of the National People's Congress, the Standing Committee's decision um, on the 31st August 2014. And I know that this is a long way down the road, uh, but what do you think will happen long in the future? 2047 is when Hong Kong's special status as a semi-autonomous Chinese territory officially expires. If nothing changes by that date, then what happens? Well, this is an often asked question, but um, we cannot envisage what will happen in 2047 uh, uh, because uh, Mr. Deng Xiaoping said um, one country, two systems is to continue for not less than 50 years. If by that time, uh, we unification of the two systems would not cause any uh, damage or would be in the best interest of both the country and of Hong Kong, then um, it would um, uh, be reunified. There will be one system, uh, one country, one system. But if circumstances um, uh, prefers, uh, uh, would be favorable to continuation of the one country, two systems, that may continue because it's to continue for at least 50 years. All right, Ms. Elsie Leung, thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong.